In this video, we're going to look at solving equations with uh, radicals in them, square roots, cube roots, etc. We're going to start with uh, fairly straightforward examples and then get uh, more complicated as we go. So here's the steps for solving. First thing you want to do is isolate the radical, which means you want to get, in this case, the square root on one side of the equal sign all by itself. And we already have that in this first example. On the left hand side of the equal sign, there's nothing else but the radical and everything under it, so we're good to go. Step number two, take both sides to the power of the index. Remember, when you have a radical, the index will be this number that's right here. That's the index. So if it's not written, it's two. It's a square root. If it's a cube root, the index is three, etc. So since this is a square root, we want to take both sides to the second power. Remember, we have to take the whole side, and this is why we have to isolate the radical, or why it's a good reason to do it, because it makes it a lot easier. So remember, anytime you have the square root of something squared, no matter what that is under there, it could be an x, it could be a binomial, whatever this glob is under there, it's going to simplify, let's work down, it's going to simplify to be that glob. No matter how complicated what's uh, under this square root, happens to be if you square it the square root and the square kind of cancel each other out I mean I hate to use the word cancel in this situation but they undo each other they're inverse operations of each other if you square something and then square root it you're gonna end up right back where you started if you square root something and square it you're gonna end up right back where you started so that's a good thing because we want to get rid of this uh, square root in order to solve this equation so on the left hand side, the squared and the square root cancel each other out and all we have left is 7, ooh, that's a ugly color. I don't want that color. Let's go here. All we have left is 7x minus 3. And then on the right hand side we have 6 squared which is 36. And now you can see we have a very, very straightforward problem. Step number 3, solve for the variable. So we're just going to add 3 to both sides. Um, and then divide by 7 and we will be done. So we're going to get a fraction answer here. We're going to get x equals 39 over 7 which is also 5 and 4 sevenths. Now the last step is to check the solutions. You always want to make sure that your solution works because sometimes when you're working with a square root, especially more complicated examples, you actually come up with solutions that do not make the original equation true, therefore they're not solutions. Let's take a look if we um, take a look at our original equation and if we plug in the value of x, 5, well let, let's, let's plug in the fraction because that's going to be easier. I'm going to change it back to 39 sevenths in a minute anyway. So let's plug in 39 sevenths. Hopefully you can see what's going to happen when you take 39 sevenths times 7 minus 3 does that equal 6? Now you're not going to square both sides or do anything. You're just taking the original equation and plugging in the value and then you're going to simplify. Not doing anything to both sides. On the left hand side these 7's are going to cancel so I get 39 minus 3 square root of 36. That's 6 and that does equal what's on the right hand side so therefore we're good. That's our solution. So those are the general steps, and like I said, these are going to get a little more complicated, but these are the general steps that you want to keep in mind as you're working through problems, uh, equations that involve radicals. All right, let's try a little more complicated one, but not too complicated. Let's say we have something like, oh, how about the square root of 5x plus 1 and then minus 11 is outside the square root equals 0. So step number one is to isolate the radical, which means on one side of the equation, in this case the left hand side, we only want the square root and we don't have that. We have a minus 11, so we have to add the 11 to the other side before we take both sides to the second power. After we add the 11 to both sides, now we've got the square root of 5 x plus 1 equals 11 and now it's just like the other problem so this would be a good point to pause the video and practice finishing this by yourself alright so let's see how you did next thing you'd want to do is square both sides 
So you would get um, 5x plus 1. The square root and the square cancel each other out. On the right hand side you get 121. Then you're going to subtract 1 from both sides. We're on step 3. You just solve for the variable. And we get 5x equals 120. Divide both sides by 5. I'm running out of space so I'm not going to show that. And that equals, um, what is that, 24? 5 goes into 12 twice with 2 left over, 24. Okay, so let's just check it to make sure. The original equation, the square root of 5x plus 1 minus 11 equals 0. Always start from the original equation. Basically, we're erasing the x and replacing it with our answer, which is 24. And we'll work it out. So the square root, uh, 5 times 24, 5 times 20 would be 100, 5 times 4 is 20, so that's 120, plus 1. Minus 11 is outside the square root, so we get the square root of 121, which is 11, take away 11, equals 0. And so we know we have the right answer. Okay, let's look at uh, an example that's not a square root and just practice that. So let's say we've got a cube root. And let's do one that um, looks a little different. It's actually going to turn out to be kind of easy, but that's okay. Let's say we've got the cube root of um, p plus 5 equals the cube root of 2p minus 4. Okay, so now on this one, for step number one, isolate the radical. We have two radicals here, and they're both isolated on each side. We've got one isolated to the left-hand side and one isolated to the right-hand side, so we're good to go. And the main reason for this is when you get to step two and you take both sides to the power, then you can use that rule that we have that basically says the nth root of anything equals or anything the nth root of anything to the nth power equals that thing so we're trying to use that rule that's why we need to isolate the radical so we can have this situation okay so now all that happens is the cubed root cancels out with the cube so on the left hand side we have p plus 5 and on the right hand side we have 2p minus 4 and that's all there is to it and then you just solve it like normal. So you're going to subtract p from both sides. 5 equals p minus 4. Add 4 to both sides. 9 equals p. And let's plug it back in and make sure it works. So we would have the cube root of p plus 5. So that's 9 plus 5. Equals the cube root of 2 times p, which is 9, minus 4. That's a times. On the left hand side we get the cube root of 14 and on the right hand side we get the cube root of 18 take away 4 which is 14. You don't have to get the decimals for this to know that's true. I mean, you, you know, cube root of 14 equals the cube root of 14. So there's an example with a cube root. If there was some number over here you would, you would just cube that number if there wasn't a radical. If it's a fourth root you're going to take both sides to the fourth power. Okay, let's step it up one more notch. And let's say we have something like, this is kind of a big step here, but I think we're ready. We're going to have the square root of 5 minus x equals x plus 1. So step number one, isolate the radical. We have it. We have the square root on the left-hand side, and so far every example I've done has the root on the left-hand side, but that certainly could be on the right-hand side. Step number two, take both sides to the power of the index. Here we have a square root. Therefore, we are going to take both sides to the second power. Now I'm going to make a mistake on this next step, and I want you to see if you can catch it. On the left-hand side, I'm going to write... 5 minus x, and on the right-hand side, I'm going to square this, and I'm going to write x squared plus 1. There's a mistake there somewhere, a very, very common mistake. Do you catch it? Well, the mistake's on the right-hand side. There's another hint for you. It has to do with squaring x plus 1. Let's go over here and think about squaring x plus 1. If I take x plus 1 and square it, what does that mean? 
That means x plus 1 times x plus 1. How do we do that? We have a binomial times a binomial. So we have to distribute or FOIL. Some of you know FOIL. First, outside, inside, last. Basically, we have to take everything from the first parenthesis and multiply it by everything in the second parenthesis. So we have to do x times x and x times 1 which gives us x squared plus 1x, or just x. Then we do 1 times x and 1 times 1, which gives us another 1x and a plus 1. Then we combine like terms, and we get x squared plus 2x plus 1. So if the, the mistake I made over here, the common mistake I made was just squaring everything in the parentheses. That doesn't work. If there's more than one term, it works if there's one term, but if there's more than one term in the parentheses, you have to write it out and uh, use the distributive property or FOIL to uh, come up with the product. So I'm going to erase this promptly because it is not correct. Basically, you just end up losing your middle term. We need that 2x. You end up getting the x squared and the 1, but you lose your 2x, and then you don't get it right. Okay, so now step 3, solve for the variable. Well, we have a different situation here, because now we have x squareds. And when you have x squareds, you solve them differently than if you just have x's. So hopefully you remember, when you solve x squared, you have to set your equation equal to 0, and then see if it factors. Let's see what happens here. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. So because of this x squared, I have to get 0 on one side of my, my equation. I'm going to add x and minus 5 and see what I get. I have 0 equals x squared plus 3x minus 4. Now i got to ask myself whether this factors, and if it doesn't factor, I'd have to use the quadratic formula. I'm kind of hopeful it's going to factor. The way to tell if it factors is to look at your last term, your negative 4, and ask yourself, is there anything that multiplies to be negative 4? Put them in those boxes. They have to multiply to be negative 4, and they have to add to be the middle number, which is 3. Now, this little scenario is only true when there's a 1x squared, which is what we have here. And there, I have some videos on factoring if you need review on your factoring. Well, lucky for us, this does factor to 4 and negative 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, and 4 plus negative 1 is 3. So therefore, we can factor this to x plus 4 and x minus 1. And then you set each factor equal to 0, because you have two things that multiply to be 0. So either this first thing has to be 0, this first factor, or this second factor has to be 0. And if x was negative 4, that would cause this first parenthesis to be 0, which would cause the product to be 0. If x was 1, that would cause this second set of parentheses to be 0, which would make the product 0. So we have two solutions. Now this is where I'm going to guess we might come up with um, a solution that is not true. And where step number 4 really makes a big difference, where we have to check our solutions. So let's check them. Okay, so we have the square root of 5 minus x equals x plus 1. So we'll take our first x value of negative 4, and we'll plug it in there. So on the right-hand side, I get negative 3, which is a bad sign altogether, because a square root never comes out to be a negative. On the left-hand side, I get uh, 9 minus a negative is a plus, and the square root of 9 is 3. By plugging in negative 4, I get 3 on the left-hand side and negative 3 on the right-hand side. That's no good. That's not equal. Even though I came up with negative 4, it is not a solution. It's called an extraneous root. And this happens when you're squaring both sides of an equation because you're making negatives into positives. If you square both sides of 3 and negative 3, they both become positive 9. So that's why that root got um, created that is not part of a solution to the original equation. My guess is our 1's going to work. Let's check that one out. Square root of 5 minus 1 equals 1 plus 1. That's a square root of 4, which is 2, and on the right-hand side, higher math, 1 plus 1 is 2. 
well at least I have one root that works and this is why you need to check and make sure that both of your answers work a lot of times when you end up having an x squared when you're solving and coming up with two solutions one of those solutions actually does not make the original equation true so this is our first video on solving equations with radicals the next video is going to show some more complicated examples of solving equations with radicals.